Hello YouTube, this is Remington H. This is a video I've been looking forward to making for quite a while now. I believe this box from DX Engineering contains an MFJ929 antenna tuner along with a connection cable for ICOM radios. I bought this tuner as a replacement and upgrade for my LDG Z100 Plus tuner. I'll go into some of the features and benefits this tuner offers and what motivated me to upgrade the Z100 Plus which has been a perfectly serviceable and reliable tuner. I ordered these products from DX Engineering on Monday. They shipped FedEx the same day and delivered today, Friday, with free shipping. Okay, let's get started. I have never ordered from DX Engineering before. I just opened the box and am presented with bubble wrap. Let's go ahead and remove that. I've heard lots of good things about DX Engineering. Okay. So first, we're presented with the ICOM interface cable. Good. Looks correct. Uh, this, what looks like an RJ45 connection, will connect to the tuner, and this definitely looks like what connects to the ICOM radio. In the box is a DX Engineering catalog, it would appear. That's always a nice bonus. Excellent. Should provide hours of entertaining reading. This was unexpected. Several stickers for DX Engineering. Very nice. And this is what I've been waiting for. The MFJ929. Let's go ahead and open it up. I expect to see typical MFJ packaging. Another catalog, an MFJ 2015 ham catalog. Fantastic. I really enjoy receiving these. Excellent. And the tuner. Tuner's a little bigger than I expected. I, I measured the dimensions and figure that it was about the same height as my ICOM 706 MK2G. But looking at it now, it looks like it looks a little thicker. Um, my concern was fitting it underneath my passenger seat along with the IC706. I think it'll be okay, but we'll find out. This is the MFJ model 929 IntelliTuner automatic antenna tuner. Handles up to 200 watts SSB CW, can match up to 32 to 1 SWR loads. I've heard quite a few concerns about MFJ products. People have said in forums that you have to kind of consider them partially assembled kits and that sometimes you need to go ahead and continue to uh, finish the assembly yourself. I've had a couple of MFJ products and I haven't had any issues. Um, this one already, I can tell there's there might be a couple of issues. First of all, as far as quality control, See if I can get it in focus there. The paint or printing of the text is a little fuzzy. You can really kind of see it on the uh, on the infinity symbol there. It's a little little blurred. That's not a big deal for me. What is kind of an issue or concern already I've noticed is some of these buttons stick. Look at that. The tune button does as well, although you can pull it out of there. And, and the same with this capacitive up button, you could pull it out. Uh, that's not a deal breaker for me. I kind of expected, if, that's, if those are the worst problems I encounter, I'll consider myself lucky. On the back, we have a connection for ground. We have a connection for a random wire antenna, and then we have, of course, the transmitter, and two antenna connections. This was a little cause for concern for me. I won't be using antenna two, and I would hate to accidentally switch to antenna two with nothing connected to antenna two and transmit from my transmitter, transceiver, potentially blowing my finals. So that's a little concern. I've considered some options, perhaps running a 
small dummy load to Antenna 2, just in case. But for now, I'm going to take my chances, I believe. I was looking through the manual, and it seems that it takes reasonable effort to switch the antennas. Hopefully. I'll find out in operation. So far, other than those couple of sticky buttons, which I'll probably try to lubricate, maybe they'll work looser over time. Everything seems fine. Uh, when I shake it, I don't hear any noise, anything rattling around in there. Everything seems to be pretty buttoned up and tightened down. So, all right, in the next clip, I will be showing you the difference between the LDG Z100 Plus and the MFJ929 IntelliTuner. Stay tuned. This is how my current setup is. Um, the radio and LDG tuner, as well as the capacitive matcher and a VHF UHF SWR meter, are located under the seat, uh, sort of beneath this floor mat here. When I remove the floor mat, you can see the setup as I have it now. So of course I'm going to replace the Z100 Plus with the new MFJ929. There's my matcher and there's the transceiver. And hidden just in there is the is the watt meter, SWR meter for the VHF UHF. Here's another view with the seat pulled up. As you can see with the LDG Z100 Plus, I really don't have any uh, instrumentation so to speak. I don't have an SWR reading and I don't have any power readings. So if I want to check how the radio and antenna system is performing, I need to pull all this out, uh, unhook the LDG Z100 Plus, and insert my SWR watt meter and take readings that way if I want to make sure the antenna is, has maintained its tune and make sure my transceiver is putting out the appropriate power unless I just want to try to rely on the uh, on the meters on the transceivers power meter on the display but that's not very hasn't been particularly accurate it's pretty important to recheck the SWR I found of a mobile antenna the antenna swings around a lot going over bumps and in the wind and the tuning can change over time so occasionally you want to readjust your your mobile antenna and make sure you understand where the uh, resonant frequency is. It's just helpful information to know when you're when you're operating the rig. So I'm looking forward to having access to the MFJ 929's SW digital SWR meter and digital uh, watt meter. When I come back, I should have the MFJ 929 installed in place of the Z100 Plus. These are the tools I'm going to be working with today. I think I'm going to primarily use my Sark 100 SWR slash antenna analyzer. I uh, did purchase a little spring for my hamstick from American Radio Supply that shipped quickly and was only five or six dollars. And this is again the MFJ 929. Uh, a slight concern here, as you can see, it's quite a bit larger than the Z100 Plus. I'm replacing it. I'm replacing it with. Uh, so far, I'm not terribly concerned about that, although that could change as I try to fit this underneath the passenger seat. It's going to get quite cramped in there, I believe, but I think it's going to be okay. The MFJ929 is about a $200 antenna tuner. Uh, the LDG Z100 Plus is about $50 cheaper. Again, it's worked fine. This is my second one. I sold my first when I thought I was sort of getting out of ham radio, but I repurchased it when I reinstalled everything. Uh, it's worked fine. It's worked well. Uh, if you're short on space or you already have an SWR watt meter run in line between your radio and antenna, the Z100 Plus might be a good choice for you. Uh, it's worked fine. It tunes quickly and it really haven't had any problems with it not being able to match my antennas. But again, I'm quite looking forward to the digital display of the 929. I reattached my 20 meter hamstick using the spring here. I hope this is strong enough. I, I first thought it was quite stiff, but it seems to swing pretty easily. Hopefully that stays 
stays tall and straight down the highway. I thought I was going to need to adjust the SWR because it added height, but before I started swinging the antenna that was reading about 1.19, uh, I think I'm probably gonna, gonna hold off making any adjustments. I think that's just fine. If this is to believe, no capacitance and no reactance, so it's perfectly resonant. Okay, it's a little tight in here. I'm gonna have to figure out how to how to make everything fit. I haven't exactly figured that out yet. But in so far, first tests have been good. Um, car is off, so it's not delivering 13.8 volts to the radio. However, um, after choosing the type of radio interface, ICOM, in the menu, uh, I was able to successfully use the tune button on the radio to initiate a tune. Subsequently, I switched to FM and transmitted at full power, and I can see that I was able to get 96 watts forward, 3.8 watts reflected, with an SWR of 1.4. That's fantastic information for me, so I know the radio is performing well. Uh, the tuner, the very first tune was quick. I'll try to get one on camera here, um, but the very first tune only took a few seconds. You can really hear the relays going back and forth, finding a match. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try to button this all up and see if we can get a nice installation out of this. Well, that's how I have it stalled, installed for now. I'm not really sure what else to do with it. The SWR meter for the uh, VHF is rather tight in there. I had to turn this upside down, but that really shouldn't be a problem. I'm trying to avoid kinks in the cable as much as I can, but it's not really completely possible here. Um, this is fitting okay. That's it for now. Uh, I'll give, I'll do some other videos providing some information on its operation and, and its performance. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section, and I'll say 7-3.